Okay, this is the lecture that is going to go over the beginning of the independent samples hypothesis testing. Uh, this is going over chapter 10, and chapter 10 is actually split up into two parts. It's split up into um, uh, basically uh, hypothesis testing dealing with two different samples. Um, and so one is independent samples, the other one is paired samples. Um, and so I'm going to open up the book really quick. It says, uh, here's the list that you need to go through. Uh, and once again, when you go on Canvas, I'm going to pull up Canvas really quick. Um, and we're going to go to Canvas, log in. Let's see here, Canvas. Um, and we're going to go to Unit 4, Hypothesis Testing, and you'll see um, you can download the sheet that you're looking at right now. You can download it from Independent Samples Worksheet, um, and then uh, we're going to go to Independent Samples right here, um, and then you're going to be able to uh, download the worksheet, uh, go, to the, uh, go to the textbook, so we're going to open that in a new tab. Um, and then I'm going to have the videos that go right here, the video that I'm recording right now. Um, then uh, we're about to complete the homework problems. I'm going to have a separate video for that. Uh, complete the independent samples hypothesis testing portion of the final portion of the final project. I'm going to have a separate video for that. Uh, then submit a picture. You uh, just go right there, submit the picture or the actual file, and then take the quiz. Okay. So this is the, um, this right here is the textbook. Um, there's some overprocessed eggs, probably from, I don't know, those just look really, I don't know. Um, we have, uh, computing, uh, comparing two independent population means, uh, then we've got the, uh, Cohen's, uh, effect size, and then, uh, testing for difference in means, uh, assuming equal, uh, population variance, and then, uh, we're not going to go over uh, two independent population proportions, um, and uh, then we're going to go over two population means with known standard deviations. Uh, and this one right here is going to be a whole separate section on paired samples, and paired samples is very different. So, but uh, what we're going over right now is basically all of this except for 10.4. Okay, so uh, I'm going to pull this worksheet back up. Um, right here, you've got the vocabulary. Uh, you can look at independent groups. Basically, you've got two different groups that can be compared. Um, so you've got a metric that can be compared to one another, um, and that uh, we're dealing with two separate groups. And then Cohen's D is the effect size, um, and make sure that you watch all the content on the effect size videos. Um, then right down here, we've got the purpose of uh, this hypothesis test. Uh, why would you run this test? This is the main purpose right here. The main purpose of this test is to compare two independent means. Um, so if I have a mean of, uh, let's say, the average number of iPads sold uh, at a Walmart store as compared to the average number of iPads store, uh, sold at uh, the Apple store. Um, you know, what, uh, you know, comparing that, you know, the average number per day, um, this would be a, um, well, you could actually do paired samples or you could do independent samples. If you just say, you know, the average number uh, per day compared to the average number per day uh, and you don't pair the two of them up, then it would be uh, an independent samples, but you could pair the two of those up. Uh, or another example is... Uh, the average um, the uh, average number of hits on a baseball team, uh, one baseball team compared to another baseball team. Um, the average weight of a uh, the average weight of a uh, bottle of ketchup as compared to the average weight of a bottle of mustard. Um, you know, basically you're comparing the averages, the means, if you will. Um, so determine if there's uh, differences between interventions. Uh, so right here, determine if there's differences between two independent groups. That's what I just covered. Um, 
determine if there's differences in interventions. Like for instance, uh, right now we've got coronavirus, right? Um, we uh, would look at it and say, okay, um, is there a difference in the average amount of time that it takes for this person to get well on this medicine as compared to not getting any treatment at all? Uh, or is there a difference in the uh, average amount of time that this medicine takes for somebody to get better compared to this person? Um, is there a difference in the amount of clicks that this person engages with uh, on this advertising stream as compared to this advertising stream? Those are also interventions. So you have two different advertising streams and um, you want to see the average amount of uh, return on investment of per click uh, or per uh, time that the ad is seen. Um, then determine if there's differences in change score. Uh, so for instance, you have a uh, you have an example where an individual um, scores on a particular exam uh, or a group of individuals um, take a particular uh, test and then they will take another test later. You can put, um, you know, the... Uh, you, you can have the average of one compared to the average of the other, or the average temperature of one year compared to the average temperature of another year. And then, uh, yeah, determine if there's a difference between, t yeah, so that's basically what, uh, what it covers. Uh, assumptions, there are four assumptions. You've got to have one dependent variable that is measured at a continuous level. Uh, so uh, once again, the book talks about how you can do it with proportions. We're not going to do it with proportions. I just feel like that's too much for right now. Um, we might do proportions in a later semester, we'll see. Um, one independent variable that consists of two categorical independent groups. Um, so we have uh, one uh, dependent variable, one independent variable. The dependent variable is dependent on the independent variable. Like for instance, uh, the independent variable uh, in one case would be the type of condiment that we're looking at. We're looking at mustard versus ketchup. Uh, so the independent variable is the type of condiment. The dependent variable is the uh, number, the average number of ounces or the average weight uh, or the weight of those. Um, and so that's the dependent variable. Um, another independent versus dependent. Uh, the average amount of time that it takes for uh, a, a work uh, a worker a, a work uh, a worker uh, with a zero turn mower to complete uh, a job um, on at a uh, site as compared to uh, a traditional. Um, riding lawnmower, um, you know, so the, the dependent variable, uh, is the amount of time. The independent variable is the machine that's being used. Um, the independence of observation. So, uh, each one of these independent groups has a whole bunch of independent observations. Um, and each of these observations has a value and all of these values get averaged, right? And so each one of these values have to be independent from each other. Uh, they cannot be dependent on one another. There's no, uh, each, each one is completely independent of one another. Uh, next, there are no significant outliers in the two groups. If you have significant outliers, um, then it can impact the, uh, it can impact um, the way that uh, it is interpreted, okay? Uh, there's two more. Um, there's the dependent variable should be a problem should be approximately normally distributed. Uh, so this needs to have a normal distribution. Also, uh, the last one is homogeneity of variance. Uh, this is the only one that we're looking at where uh, this is the only test that we're looking at where we have two different groups and two different variances. And so if you have... Um, for instance, I'm going to, let's see here, I'm going to pause this for a second. So, uh, right here we have a normal distribution and it is spread out to a certain amount, okay? And then I'm going to put another uh, normal distribution right here. And so right now these have perfectly normal, uh, or perfectly, uh, homogeneity, perfect homogeneity of variances. In other words, the variances are identical, the spread outness is identical, the standard deviations for both of these are completely identical. However, if I have this one right here compared to this one right here, 
um, and this distribution compared to this dis to this distribution, um, these do not have homogeneity of variance. In other words, the variances, the spread outness of the data is very different. And so it's very hard to compare this group to this group with accuracy when, um, when they are not, uh, they don't have the same shape. So you want to be able to uh, compare uh, groups um, and basically say where is the location of this group as compared to the location of this group and when you have uh, this massive spread outness of the data it makes it very difficult uh, when you have one that's very spread out and one that's not very spread out it makes it very difficult to be able to make a uh, conclusion about that um, then right down here we have hypotheses examples um, we have uh, the mu sub 1 equals mu sub 2 um, this is for a uh, non-directional or a two-tailed, and then this is for a one-tailed, uh, where um, you would expect one to be uh, larger than the other. Um, and then down here, we've got the formula for the effect size. Once again, we're still using uh, Cohen's D. Uh, really important here, this right here stands for the pooled standard deviation. The pooled standard deviation. When you have the pooled standard deviation, uh, when they are close together, there's a really easy way to calculate the pooled standard deviation. However, when you've got these standard deviations that are really far spread out like this, um, there's a whole different formula. And uh, so we're going to be covering that a little bit later. Then coming down here, we've got the homework problems. Um, and this is really important. I really need you guys to follow along. I'm going to have a whole separate lecture just on the homework problems. Um, uh, and so I'm going to pause this and have this one end, but um, this right here is uh, basically the homework problems here, just like what we did in the single sample. Uh, we're going through step by step the entire six step process of the hypothesis testing, and uh, we're going to do that, let's see here, two times, uh, three times. We're going to do that three times, three times, um, and I know that it seems overkill, um, and I know that you guys can fly through this, and if you can fly through this, more power to you. Uh, but I'm going to take the time, and I'm going to, you know, explain these and make sure that you thoroughly understand what's going on. It's up to you if you guys want to watch the entirety of all these lectures. Uh, I'm not going to force you to. Um, I'm just making these lectures for you to try to make your life easier, so that way you can be like, okay, I understand what's going on. The the truth is, this is not like the this is not super intuitive. This is something that uh, you've got to wrap. At uh, you've got to wrap your mind around. Even I sometimes, you know, go back and I'm, I'm looking at, you know, type one, type two error, and I'm like, gosh, I got to wrap my mind around it because just because of the way that it's worded, it's it's worded in a very weird way that's hard to really uh, conceptualize. Um, and so just be aware um, that these lectures, you can skip through them as much as you want. Um, I have a, uh, you know, yeah, you're going to be able to get the right answers um, by just following along, but it's more important that you understand what the right answers are. Um, and so if you understand what the right answers are, you're going to be a lot further ahead um, because when you get to the uh, final exam, um, you're going to be golden. So just be aware of that and uh, make sure that you keep up with these. And I'm going to pause the rest of this. Sorry, I was trying to just fix something really quick. Um, I'm going to end it here and then you can follow along with the homework problems in the next lecture.